Hunter x Hunter is a world filled with very dangerous things. There's the phantom troop, chimera ants, pedophiles, but amongst dangerous things, one place reigns supreme. And that place would be none other than the Dark Continent. You see, all the land that we know in Hunter x Hunter thus far is an archipelago, aka a grouping of islands. And these grouping of islands make up six countries as of now in the manga. It was five for the majority of the manga, but now it's six. And this archipelago exists within a very large lake, where things are relatively safe. However, if you leave this archipelago and sail across the lake to the continent that wraps around this lake, you have now reached the Dark Continent. And the Dark Continent has always been on the back burner of Hunter x Hunter, a place everybody knows about but nobody's been to. Well. Some people have been there. Well, in fact, a lot of people have been there, but coming back is the issue. And since the Dark Continent is going to be the stomping grounds for our next arc in Hunter x Hunter, which is coming out November 4th, in Japan, that is, it's about time that you and me became as well-versed in the Dark Continent as we can be. That is to say that today, we're explaining the Dark Continent. But before we get to explaining anything, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. So Hunter x Hunter has been under hiatus for over a thousand days, or at least it had been. However, the mangaka of Hunter x Hunter recently returned to drawing the manga, and we're getting our first new volume in over three years dropping on November 4th in Japan. And in this volume, we are gonna be exploring the Dark Continent. Now in this volume, we'll probably barely scratch the surface. The volume will probably be more about just getting to the Dark Continent than the Dark Continent itself. But before we get to the Dark Continent, what do we know about it? Well, actually, the human race started on the Dark Continent. Human ancestors migrated from the Dark Continent to the known world, which is the archipelago of islands that now exists in the middle of Lake Mobius. However, humans weren't the only things to originate in the Dark Continent. Magical beasts also originated there. But just because humans migrated to the known world doesn't mean that humans weren't curious about where their ancestors had originated. And thus, over the last couple hundred of years, people have sent expeditions to the Dark Continent, specifically the V5 countries. Now, the V5 countries are all of the countries that comprise the archipelago. But 200 years ago, the V5 countries came together and prohibited travel to the Dark Continent. But why did they prohibit travel to the Dark Continent? Well, one, there is a 0.04% chance that you survive a trip to the Dark Continent. That is to say, of all the people that have taken trips to the Dark Continent, only 0.04% have survived. So that's not good to begin with. But what about those who do survive? Well, back when the V5 was doing voyages to the Dark Continent, if people did survive their trip to the Dark Continent and came back to the known world, that's kind of where the problem started. See, you would figure, oh, we made it off the Dark Continent, we're good. But that's not the case. See, each of the V5 expeditions that happened over 200 years ago that were somewhat successful in that humans returned, each brought back something known as a threat or a calamity. And since there was five of these expeditions, one for each of the V5 countries, these five threats and or five calamities became known as the five threats. These five threats were things encountered in the dark continent that came back with the humans that survived back to the known world. And they weren't called threats for no reason. These things that returned with these V5 expeditions killed thousands of people. But what are the five threats? Well, the first of the five threats is Bryon. And Bryon is a mysterious humanoid that was encountered about 400 kilometers north of Lake Mobius in a city built like a labyrinth or a maze. You see, I say humanoid because Bryon is built like a human except for the fact that where its head should be is a massive orb. You see, the United States of Saharta set a expedition of their strongest fighters and hunters, and they were sent to the Dark Continent to find anything of value, really. So as these incredibly strong forces traveled about 400 kilometers north, they came upon the Labyrinth City. And it was at this Labyrinth City that they found herbs that can cure 10,000 different diseases. However, after finding these herbs, they encountered Bryon. And Bryon, who was designated the protector of these runes, killed every single one of them except for two. And these two that survived were treated back to Lake Mobius, but unfortunately, they brought Bryon back with them. But here's the thing about Bryon. He's not a singular entity. See, what I love about Togashi is he loves details. And thus, all of the five threats actually have stats. Stats that go over their ferocity, number, fertility, destructivity, and their overall dangerousness. And Bryon's number has a C ranking, meaning that there's more, meaning that there's not a ton of them, but there is more than one, specifically less than 100. The second of the five threats is a gaseous life form known as I. Now, I is probably the most talked about of the five threats, because it's largely believed that Nanika is actually 
AI. When the Mimbo Republic sent an expedition to the Dark Continent with the help of the Hunter Association, they were looking for a thing called the Trinity Elixir. Now, the Trinity Elixir is known as the mother solution for a myriad of different liquids. That is to say, you could make a large amount of different solutions using this Trinity Elixir. In simple terms, basically any liquid you want, you can make with the Trinity Elixir. However, before they found the Trinity Elixir, they found I. An I is a gaseous life form, explained as the codependence of desire. And these I, of which there were many, proceeded to kill all of the people sent by the Mimbo Republic and the Hunter Association, except for three people left. However, these three people that survived had all lost any shred of sanity. Now, the reason that people think I is not because for a lot of reasons. One, we've seen actual victims of I in the known world. Even though when I was brought back from the Dark Continent to the known world, it was said to be kept under lock and key. However, it looks as though I has broken out because Jing states that they have found actual victims of I in the known world. But how do they know that I killed them? Well, because I kills you by squishing you, which is exactly what Nanaka does if you refuse her requests four times. Also, Nanika, instead of saying hi, says I. Hi is yes in Japanese. Also, the terminology, the codependence of desire very much applies to Nanika, since the codependence of desire in layman terms is essentially when one person in a relationship encourages self-destructive behavior in the other person that they're in a relationship with. Kind of like how Nanika gives form to some of people's worst desires when she grants their wishes. The next of the five threats is the Hellbell. See, the Hellbell was discovered when the Federation of Okima was looking for a thing called nitro rice. Nitro rice is a grain of rice that increases the longevity of humans, making them live for hundreds of years. It also gives them energy to work for days on end. The Federation of Okima looked for nitro rice in the southern part of the Dark Continent. And in the southern part of the Dark Continent, they encountered a wild swampland. Now, the Federation of Okima brought a thousand people. And when they encountered this wild swampland and the Hellbell, 99% of them died leaving only 11 people to survive the expedition. Now, the Hellbell is a twin-headed snake, but that's not the most interesting thing about it. See, while obviously having two heads is dope, how does one snake or even a group of snakes kill 990 people? Well, the snakes didn't do it. What do I mean by that? Well, the Hellbell lives up to its name, and it infects its prey with a murderous intent. That is to say, it trumps up the bloodlust of everybody in its range. And thus, by infecting those around it with a murderous rage, they just murder each other. Now, whether or not this was simply one Hellbell or multiple Hellbells who were responsible for the death of these 990 people, we don't know. The stat sheet for number has a question mark. This feels like a good time to mention that every single one of these five threats is considered a higher level of threat than the Chimera Ants, all holding threat levels of B plus to A, while Chimera Ants are considered a B minus threat level. Next to the five threats is also considered an A in threat level, and that would be PAP. See, Pap is a bit of an enigma. See, we don't necessarily know what Pap looks like. We simply know that Pap likes to keep humans as pets. And while it keeps these humans as pets, it also likes to feed on them, like they're a juice box. Pap will essentially attach a straw to the top of a human's body and drink them like a juice box. But they'll also keep these shriveled human bodies around as pets. Pap was found in a mountain range in the northeast region of the Dark Continent. And it was found when the Bergerose Union was looking for an infinite energy source. You see, the Bergerose Union sent a thousand people looking for something called the Unmanned Rock. A rock that once submerged in water would generate 20,000 kilowatts of electricity an hour. So basically, an infinite energy source. However, instead of finding the unmanned rock, the Bergerose Union found PAP, which killed 993 of them, leaving only seven survivors. And PAP, much like I, has also had victims be found in the known world. And the Hunter Agency is very aware of these victims. In fact, the Hunter Association has found these victims and keeps them so nobody will find out about the fact that there's a PAP in the loose in the known world. The last of the five threats is the Zobe disease. See, while most of the five threats are animals or humanoids, the Zobe disease is just that, a disease. But specifically, it's an immortality disease. And I know what you're saying, you're saying, well, that doesn't sound so bad. Immortality could be kind of cool. But it's not. It's not cool. Zobe disease was found when the Kokenyu Kingdom explored the southeast part of the Dark Continent. See, this is actually the expedition we know the most about. Because some people who will become very important in the next arc here were a part of this expedition. See, the Kokenyu Kingdom was looking for something called Metallion. And we don't really know what Metallion is. 
But that's kind of the point of Metallion, because nobody really knows what Metallion is. See, Metallion has weird alchemical properties, and the Coquinho Kingdom found it and wanted to bring it back to the known land to investigate what was going on with this plant. However, after collecting the plant and trying to return back to their ship, some of the members of the expedition veered off the trail. And once they veered off the trail that they had used to trek out to the alchemical plant, a couple of them got infected with the Zobe disease. See, only six people, including Beyond Netero, who's one of the most important people of the Dark Continent arc, survived this expedition. And while a couple of people got infected with Zobe disease, not all the people who got infected with it survived. See, because Zobe disease actually has a relatively high fatality rate. See, the only person who actually survived being infected with Zobe disease was a hunter. And this hunter became a mortal. But not just a mortal in the unkillable sense, a mortal in the sense that they didn't need food or water or anything to truly sustain their life. Except there is one thing that those infected with Zobe disease and live need to do. In order to sustain themselves, they need to eat their own flesh. Yes, you heard me correctly. In order for somebody with Zobe disease to continue living on forever as an immortal being, they have to eat their own body. But that's fine because they're immortal and the regeneration of their tissue is next level. So while they might eat their forearm in the morning, by the afternoon, the forearm is back. However, having the only way you can sustain yourself by eating your own flesh does take a big toll on somebody's sanity. And thus, those who survive Zobe disease usually end up insane. But those five threats are only from sanctioned trips. Since 200 years ago, when trips to the Dark Continent were officially considered illegal, there's been 149 unsanctioned attempts, one of which was done by a young Isaac Netero, Zig Zoldik, who was Maha Zoldik's father, and another hunter. Of all these survivors of these 149 unsanctioned attempts, of which there was only 28, these are the only three people who didn't come back insane. AKA, they were the only three people to pass their re-entrance exam that gauged their sanity after going to the Dark Continent. But here's the thing, getting to the Dark Continent isn't just about sailing in one direction. Well, yes, obviously, the Dark Continent exists in all directions from the archipelago. Humans would not be able to get to the Dark Continent without a guide. What is a guide? Well, a guide is a breed of magical beasts that know the waters of Lake Mobius better than anyone. See, because around the known world, there's an oceanic border, and that oceanic border is Lake Mobius. But Lake Mobius is a treacherous place to be, and thus humans need the magical beasts the guide to guide them through Lake Mobius. But guides can only be summoned by the Gatekeeper, which is an even more magical entity which exists on the new continent. See, you know how I said the known world was an archipelago of island that exists in the center of Lake Mobius? Well, like kind of far from the known world, but not exactly in the dark continent, there's a continent called the New Continent. Now, this new continent is so far from the known world that humans haven't domesticated it yet. It's overrun with magical beasts, but it's significantly safer than the Dark Continent. And this is where the Gatekeeper lives. And thus, if you want to do an expedition to the Dark Continent, you have to go to the New Continent first to get a guide that can guide you through Lake Mobius. However, sometimes you will hear the New Continent being talked about like it is the Dark Continent. However, this is just the V6 nations passing the new continent off as the dark continent to civilians so civilians won't actually try to get to the dark continent because the new continent is significantly safer and that's basically everything we currently know about the dark continent it's dangerous a lot of people have died while going there it's got a lot of valuable things isaac netero went isaac netero's son is now going a lot of the phantom troop is going hisoka is going the zodiacs are going jing is going periston's going karabka is now the main character leorio is also kind of the main character now gila was off somewhere being an assassin and go no longer has net and that's everything you need to know with Hunter Hunter coming back. I hope this has not only prepared you for Hunter Hunter returning, but also got you hyped for it. And if it has, tell me in the comments below. And while you're down there, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Listen, I'm not saying I look more forward to making these videos than I do NC Hammer 23 videos, but I have so much range on this page.